All right, guys. Welcome to another episode of The Common Theory. I'm, of course, Chris, along here with my man, Dallas. And we have something interesting for this one for you guys. Um, we are doing a tier list, but we're not doing a tier list, just giving it to you guys as in here, this is what we think. We're actually going to discuss it between the two of us, and we're going to create it right along. So, yeah, this is going to be kind of fun. I'm actually pretty excited to do this. So, Dallas, what do you got for us, man? Yeah, um, before we jump into this, I just want to point out that all the commanders on here are either commanders that have topped in tournaments recently, be it RIW's tournament, Sanctuary Online events, Dallas Walker's Riches to Rags tournament. Um, I believe those are the three big events. And then there's also just uh, every deck that's in Tier 1 or Tier 2 of Crash's tier list. The top 10 commanders from when I made this from cpdh.guide. And just a couple of other spicy ones that we thought would be fun to include. So, yep. yeah. Um, with that, we can hop right on in. So, All right, bro. Let's first, take it away. Take it away. Yeah, first up we got Composite Golem. Um, I put this one on here. This one isn't a topping tournament list or anything. But I added this one because I think it's the most viable five-color commander. And I just kind of wanted to talk about five-color in general. So what are your thoughts on five-color? Um, well, if you were going to ask me in general, I would tell you no. Like, that's not trying to be me, not trying to be anything along those lines. But I would tell you no. But my opinion has changed with that just because I've played against it, I've seen what's been done with it, and things of that nature. And I really like the curiosity approach you took with it. Because it's not really noticeable what you're doing when we're playing a game, and it's just like, oh. Oh. And then it happens. But it also reminds me of, like, similar to, like, CEDH with, like, decks like Magda and stuff like that, where you're like, well, now I know what you're doing. Maybe you're never going to do it again. You, you know what I mean? So that's kind of like the thought process I have with Composite Golem. Yeah, so. the nice thing about Composite Golem is that you can never just assume what they're playing, right? Like, I exactly. played Curiosity. I basically was playing Grixis Curiosity with the green Curiosity effect and, like, no white cards. I also built a five-color wall tribal, which was teamer-based. Um, yep. So you can do a lot of different things with the commander. Mm -hmm. And honestly, the ability is really nice. Um, the hard part is you have to basically take a turn off to set it up. But then, yeah, if you're playing a combo deck and you go turn 6 golem, turn 7 I have, what, 11, 12 mana? Like, you can probably get there. Um, exactly. So it's, it's cool, um, but I don't think it's super competitive or anything. Um, I think just because it has literally every access to every common legal in the format, I want to put it in C tier. I don't think it's D tier. I don't think it's super casual. We forgot to define what these tiers actually mean. Um, uh, you're right. We did forget that little notion. Um, you want to help us out and uh, define this so everybody knows what we're doing? <laughs> yeah, uh, let's, let's put some uh, weight to these so everyone knows what we're saying. Um, first off, every deck on here is either proven to be at least somewhat tournament viable or something that we think is somewhat tournament viable. So if anything goes in the C or D tier, it's not a bad deck. Um, S tier is the decks that we think are very capable of consistently topping events and even winning them. Uh, decks that are just extremely strong and can even potentially carry players just because they're so so insanely powerful able to 3v1 tables all that fun stuff um just like the cream of the crop um a tier still very powerful in tournament um maybe not quite as consistent at being able to win events but still very very capable of topping events very easily 
still has strong 3v1 potential, all that fun stuff. Or, you know, just very good at taking out specific threats and all that. Um, and notably, this is tournament environment tier list, so we are taking time into consideration, which is very relevant for some of these decks. Um, B tier, these are the decks that are going to top events, but maybe not as many people playing the same deck that are going to top, or maybe only one or two pilots top, or it's just more difficult to learn the deck and bring it to events and consistently perform within time constraints, all that jazz. Uh, C tier, these are the decks that I think take a lot of work to be able to bring to a tournament and top consistently with, but they can, but you have to be a pretty dedicated pilot to do so. Um, just not as much of the raw power as these higher tier options. And D tier are the ones that I think if you are absolutely dedicated to the deck, you can top, but I don't think these are decks that are going to be topping events consistently, especially if we don't have a dedicated pilot going to events repeatedly. Yep. Any other input on that, Chris? Uh, no. Uh, I'm pretty with it. Uh, there's... Nope. Sounds good to me, man. Let's make it happen. All right. What are your thoughts on C for composite golem? I'm gonna, I'm gonna argue just a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna say D. The reason I say D is because the mana base is gonna fluctuate, and you may just lose for getting the wrong lane at the wrong time. This is true, but uh, mm -hmm. that's why I really like just composite golem shells that are three color based and then maybe splashing one or two cards in another color and composite golem gives you access to those pips if you absolutely need to do it that way but i it's... think three color mana bases are tolerable to support in this format uh, i agree with that but um that's also saying we're getting to six mana yeah so but um you get access to every card, you know? You have all the ramp in the format. <laughs> yep. So, I, I, I'm i still going to vote D. Um, uh, I'll give you C if you'd like C. We'll but, put it um, in D since it hasn't even showed up to, like, a tournament yet. Um, yeah. But I personally think that this can go in C tier. Um, but we'll leave it down uh, here for now. I, I do think there is validity to putting it in C for the record, but... All right, uh, let's move on to the next one. So the next one, I believe, if we would have done this a couple weeks ago, we would have put this in C, potentially. Um, I don't think that's no longer the case. So we're going to bring up Abdel Adrian in Agent of the Iron Throne. Um, Yeah. <laughs> yeah very notable that we are doing this like um, right after the commander masters spoiler season has happened just so everyone's aware because yeah that changes this tier list um <laughs> I, I would say dramatically not a little bit um we i mean going from like if you were going to tell me that i would vote c for this um i'm gonna vote a um uh yeah, I would have put this in B tier before just because it's still Abdel, but yeah, no, like Dread Return is so so good for this deck, it's insane. And the I mean, uh, the other Nadir is, card, yeah. Yeah, Nadir is why I say it breaks this deck wide open because like the deck used to have Agent of the Iron Throne and like Falcon Wrath Noble. Did I get the name right? Falcon Wrath yeah. Noble, the four mana? Yeah. So those were the two cards that were its win cons. Now we have Markwood Bats and we have Nadir. So now the deck has a play set of win cons, which is notable in a <laughs> like tournament environment, right? So now we're we're not trying to hunt for win conditions. We're just naturally drawing them. And there's cards that have synergy within the deck. They can actively go get these cards now. So it's not just 
oh, I hope I see it. Like, we have cards that can transmute to go get one. We have cards that just come into play and look at the top four for one of the powers, right? There, There's so many different options that this deck now brings to the table that it didn't have before. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to say this for every Abdel deck, but at bare minimum, <laughs> you have Abdel in the command zone, and Abdel is just such an insane card that I think it's hard to put any Abdel deck below B, personally. Because, um, yeah, I think they're all just crazy good, and this deck definitely got a power-up from this set and a couple of the more recent sets. So, Agreed. I can I can definitely go with A tier for this deck. Yep. So let's move on. Uh, take the next one for us, man. We'll we'll swap it this time. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Um, next up, we got Blue Abdel with a uh, Sword Coast Sailor or literally any blue background. Um, yep. It's Flicker Abdel. You know it. You love it. Um, this deck is insane. Um, I'm sure we already know gator's opinion on this deck but yeah like this deck is very consistent at being able to put up a turn seven win um and that's like faster for our format it's slow compared to some of the other combo decks in the meta but whenever the average game is lasting nine or ten turns turn seven is a good turn to be able to consistently present wins on you have an insane grind game with the flicker game plan and Abdel in the command zone, multiple winning combos, every flicker spell can go infinite, you know. Abdel's just insane. Yep. Uh yeah. I mean I'm gonna say S to this one. Um uh, Yeah, I'm I'm deck is bonkers. Yeah, this so. deck is insane. Um, as a, a quick little note, I actually had a really cool experience uh, over the weekend. Um, I actually had a new CPDH player that uh, came over my house. We had like a, a big turnout of a bunch of people uh, come over. It was we all had a lot of fun, and he had yet to have a deck. So I was just like, "Here, here's my Abdel deck. Like, give it a play." And he goes, "Sure," and he started playing it and. It was a very, it was a crazy pot. It was Abdel Agent, Abdel Sword, Third Path, and Dargo Kellef. And he was just like, yeah, for sure. I'll do my thing. And he just like developed naturally, just went infinite on turn six. And he was just like, oh, wow. He's like, this deck is so good. And then he like, he just played and played and he's just like, Dude, this deck is like really, really good. And I was like, Yeah, it, it, it's it's good. He's just like, No, it's really good. <laughs> I'm like, Yeah. <laughs> you know, because like every... Oh, go for it. Go for it. You're enforcing my opinion on this deck that it is the well, easiest combo deck to just pick well, up and play in the format it, and win. Like it was just <laughs> so funny to watch him because there were two Abdels at the table, right? And he's just like, hmm. All of the cards in my hand are doing the same exact thing. All the cards in my graveyard are doing the same thing. Huh. But, like, it was just fun to watch him just be like, this is pretty easy. <laughs> I'm telling you. guys you, lose. <laughs> easiest combo deck ever. Uh, I, I don't think it's the easiest combo deck ever, but yes, I do get why sometimes it does walk you through the process, and that's why it does deserve to be in the S tier, right? Yeah. So, but let let me take the next one. Oh, you course. take the next one. I've never seen this card in my life. Yeah, this, this so, um, so this probably is going to be in D tier, but this is Gretchen Tichwillo. Um, as we know, what I just said is null and void. Um, this deck has taken down two events. Um, this deck's insane. Like, we all know Puzzle's opinion on this deck, right? It's... The deck has so much redundancy. The deck has so many lines. The deck is... insane. I mean... I don't know that I need to even harp on it because at this point I think it's established. Um, 
if you play our format, my opinion is you need to know how this deck functions. That is the end. If if you don't take the time to understand the deck even a little bit, you're doomed to fail. So that's what I got. Yeah, the deck is definitely more popular than I expected it to be. Um, it also just is one of those decks that the way it combos means that we get a lot of redundancy over time. Same with Abdel Blue, right? Like, we just got a yep. new Archaeomancer in Commander's Master. Um, yeah. We also got a new Untapper that can also cycle an Untap a permanent, which means it's a ritual that draws a card which is absurd for Gretchen. And yeah, we just, over time, keep getting redundancy for these two decks. And yeah, I think, personally, I think Gretchen is the best deck in the format. I'm going to say it. Um, you're free to disagree on that if you want, but I think it's an easy S tier. Yeah, uh, I think these two do deserve to be an S tier. Um, I think Gretchen has a few difficulties um over abdel but i would say that we can argue that they're both the same yeah shocker we both think our deck is yeah. the best deck um <laughs> well we, i we think we're, we both our have decks. different yeah that, 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 is, that is true but i mean realistically they put up results and yeah yeah it is what it is so all right let's move on you want to yeah. let uh... actually let me let me take this one. Let me take Go this one. It. This is this is a deck of my true to my heart. Um, this is Dargo the Shipwrecker and good old Armix. Uh, if you would ask me three weeks ago, I'd have given you one uh, with the cards that actually recently came out. Uh, I'm gonna be a little bit more harsh on this deck than I was prior. Um, Dargo and Armix, I believe, should go in C tier at its best. Um, the way I had configured this deck originally was a hard control deck. It used Dargo to end the game faster. But with the recent sweepers, which are good, with Sulfurous Blast and Drown in Filth, or no, I'm sorry, Drown in Sorrow. We can't use either of those with Armix in play. And we had Evancar's Justice and Pestilence before, but Pestilence was the point of the deck. Now with those, we're going to have more incidental sweepers, even against us. Which actually is not good for us, because Armix is supposed to control the board state against Gretchen's and Tantiovas and things of that nature, so... Depressingly enough, I'm a little bit down on this deck with all the new recent spoilers, so... Yeah. What, what do you got? Um, I think Armix is just a card that draws so much hate because it it does do an excellent job of locking people out of the game. Um, repeatedly turning any card in your hand into removal mm -hmm. is obviously just a very powerful effect. And having the win con in the command zone for a control deck is nice, but... Yeah, those sweepers do hurt, especially when people do not want to see Armix exist ever. Um, yep. And yeah, uh, I think value <laughs> game plans are probably also getting a little bit better, um, which I think makes hard control worse. So Yeah, I agree. And also, you know, Dread Return means control's a little bit worse because, you know, we have free reanimation potentially coming into the format so yep. yeah i can go with c tier yeah uh i will put one caveat um which this commander is not on our list but i would replace this with jury and if this was jury uh, i would bump it up because jury really? has a new toy jury has some new toys and jury <laughs> i you Skulk all you want. <laughs> Jury is, uh, I find it to be uh, more of a competitor than this. So. I'll have to see it after these new cards, but before these, this set, that deck is not something I would put in D tier even personally. So these yep. new cards better be good for Jury. But, yep. uh, I get it. I get it. So, 
we got a uh, TPI coming up next. Um, this is one of the premier is it decks in the format, in my opinion. Um, which mm. is not saying much because is it is an insane color combination in our format, but agreed. Um, just read this card. It's the text on this card is absurd. It makes colorless creatures, which is relevant for our format. It makes artifacts, which is relevant for our format. Um, unfortunately, it dies yep. to all the damage based to removal um, <laughs> and all the new sweepers. Um, so it does struggle a bit more now, but I I don't know. I think Curiosity Control is a really strong shell. Obviously, I think that um, shocker. But yeah, um, I still think TPI is very powerful, especially if you're playing. I think combo variants are pretty strong, personally. Um, I want to put this in A tier. Um, which one are we talking about? Because if we're we're going by the one that was in the events here and stuff like that. Well, so if, um, if we could decide on the variant... See, that's the thing. Uh, combo TPI topped and non-combo TPI topped. Uh, two different tournaments. So Okay. So if we Whichever just Whichever you think both, is better. Then, <laughs> um, I would personally put the control one being better. Um, because I think you need to have live cards all the time with TPI right because it's easily disruptable i do so it, entirely but continue i mean it needs to protect itself right you're just gonna let somebody wrath you like yeah. I, I would wrath myself before i let you wrath me um i don't think combo variants care about getting wrathed and i think you're playing like every tpi list gets insane amounts of card draw because they get those new improvised draw spells and conspire draw spells and all that like random stuff convoke draw spells that they've gotten in the random new sets yeah, the deck has like such strong card draw that i don't think every card needs to be a live card i think you can afford to play paragon drake and just have an actual win condition other than pingers See the, the see the irony about that is uh, that's that's where I'm different because if you say yes I'm gonna be like well I have a bunch of four and five and six mana cards and some of these decks if now half of these decks at minimum you counter the commander the deck does nothing right this is one of those decks if you decide to keep the commander off the table you are literally doing nothing, right? You're sitting with six, seven mana card in your hand, just like, oh, look, this is fabulous, right? And these decks on average are running 30, 32 lands, right? Maybe 34 at the high. So I would argue that this deck would be in B tier. Um, and I say that because I've personally been playing this deck a lot lately. And... I keep losing to the most ridiculous stuff. And that's kind of why I'm saying this. Like, if you would ask me a couple weeks ago, I would have told you, A, solid. Deck is solid. Like, the deck is solid. It has great game against Dargos. It has great game against all these other decks. It puts up a fantastic wall with these artifact creatures and then colored creatures, and the deck is insane. But with me recently playing this deck, way more than i should be <sighs> once you take me kind of like once you kind of push me off to the side i'm actually pushed off to the side entirely i'm like cool so my draw spells just draw more cards and i don't have more action i'm just drawing to draw and then i draw to draw see that's and why you I need a combo so you can win the game um yes and then you draw to draw right so but uh, I'll give you A because that was my opinion several weeks ago. I think it's hard but, to not put it in A considering the tournament results that this deck has had. 
Um, it hasn't won any tournaments, but we also haven't had that many. But it has topped fairly consistently. Yeah. So, and and that's why I'm okay with going with A. So I get you. So, but yeah, let's move on. Passageway uh, Seer. That is not a passageway seer, my brother. That is not a passageway seer. So oh, loyal you are right. That is a loyal subordinate. You are right. <laughs> Our lists are looking a bit different. I have a passageway seer. Uh, but that's fine. Let's do loyal subordinate. Uh, yeah. Uh, we're going to agree to disagree. Um, this should be A to me. I personally think if your deck can't beat this... If your deck can't beat this deck, your deck is going to struggle to survive in the format. This deck is simple. Here's a loyal subordinate. Deal with it or lose the game. Literally doesn't have to do anything else. Just goes, here it is. Stop it. And you're like, I don't have removal. Then you lost the game. That's it. Um, yeah, I think this deck is a bit too fragile to be an A tier. Um, especially considering how often I see this deck ritual out its commander um, and then not have any other real mana sources. Um, I think mm -hmm. this deck just isn't quite fast enough um, or consistent enough in, you know, if it gets respected, I, I don't think I can put this in A tier. Um, I think this is a B tier deck, though. Um, the win condition is good, and it does have good consistency in the command zone, but yeah, I think if you get respected a little bit, this deck is not A tier. I do not think I can put this in the same tier as Abdel, Agent of um, the Iron Throne. Well, I think that's why it's supposed to be an A tier. You have to respect it. If you choose to not you lose. Sure, but you respect it literally one time and it is now not winning the game. Um, I um, think the decks above it can be respected three to four times and still win the game. Yeah. I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give you that, but the rest of the deck, um, what Loyal Subordinate is doing is that the rest of the deck does compensate for if your commander is oobly edited. So the deck does take that in consideration, so it does compensate for the lack of its commander. I mean, it tries, but it's still mono black aggro. Um, it's mono black <laughs> burn, if anything. If, if, if yeah, we were going to uh, like be nitpicky, egg. yeah. It's, well, no, it doesn't even have to attack. Half, of, like, a large chunk of those creatures are like, coming to play lose two life gain two life like it that's kind of and what it's doing that gonna win the game if you're not attack three you mana don't... drain two that's that's not I what mean, i would call a good card yeah uh, yeah i see what you're saying but until you have reps in against it it's oh i've it's... gotten my reps <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah I, I get you i get you i can't agree to disagree but well you're gonna give me b because if you say c like we're gonna have yeah, to no. end this right now b tier <laughs> is fine i do think this is better than dargo armix which is no i will kind of crazy but <laughs> I, I will i will put as a caveat here and i'm gonna say this about you and i think you already know what i'm gonna say puzzle you don't believe that an aggro deck should be in s tier we'll get that out of the way right now it's true. Right? That is true. So that does push this low subordinate, which is an aggro deck, a little lower than I believe it should belong. So I, that is relevant. Aggro just hasn't actually performed well in tournaments or anything. It hasn't performed super well in tournament metas. It hasn't performed super well in online metas. It it does good, but um not not as good as combo by any margin and even mid-range yep. contests it 
So yep, it's it's less forgiving. It, yeah. it it is it is a bit difficult to play sometimes. So, but yeah. but let's move on. Crackling Drake time. Um, this is a deck that saw play a lot a long time ago. It sees significantly less play now. Um, from my experience, at least. I like the combo variants of this deck more than the Voltron variants, for sure. Hard control is just tough, especially in tournament metas with time limits and all that jazz. And, I mean, I think is it is good combo colors for Flicker. This is the infinite draw in your command zone for the Flicker. Um, and the beat's backup plan is fine. I just don't think it should be your main plan. Um, but even still, this commander has four pips, which is difficult sometimes. And I think there are better is it decks out there. What are your thoughts? Um, as this being one of my original decks of the format as a whole, um, I did play the Flicker version because the Drake was my outlet in the command zone. So I loved it. The deck was awesome. Um, if you had asked me a couple weeks ago, I would have told you D-tier solid. Um, I will give you this. Those new cards gave me a little more faith. Um, specifically Sulfurus, yeah. right? That card gives me more faith in this deck. But that's only one card. So, I would like to keep it at D-tier until I start seeing it come back. Because it does have some really bad matches. And it does still hold the control role when you sit at the table, even though you're the combo variant. Because you have to be the fun police, because you're a bit slower than Malcolm variants, Gilmage variants. So, yeah. yeah, there is a dex are faster. So, I I wanted to put this in C tier initially, but yeah, the more I think about it, um the C is not for crackling, uh the D is for Drake. <laughs> um but yeah. <laughs> Let's go on and move on, Chris. All right, this is what I was talking about. Passageway Seer. Um if you read this card, it's it's deceiving in my opinion. It only says great things. So this is a solid initiative commander. It's a life linker. It's it in theory this card should be insane. I have seen this deck play time and time again. And the problem that pilots have told me about this deck because I personally have not played it myself, but pilots that have played this have said i'm really good at killing a player for sure i get to the second player i need to extend a little bit more and then i overextend i get them dead and then i just lose to the next player it doesn't matter that i'm at 60 life 70 life 80 life that's it or we just draw in time so it's i don't know if that's me or them you know what i mean like well, not me, I should say, but, like, their experiences, maybe the matches, but from what I've gathered, this deck just kind of has problem beating three players. Uh, what, what is your thoughts on that? Yeah, um, like, it looks like you have a win condition in your command zone, and the initiative is kind of a win condition, and a creature that keeps getting bigger is kind of a win condition. But, um... Yeah, I think this deck does struggle with time limits a bit. Um, this deck really struggles if the commander gets countered, which is a realistic occurrence since it's four mana. Because a lot of these decks that have initiative built into the command zone really rely on the first trigger getting them a land drop. Um, a lot of these decks are built around that. So some decks... Some variants will even go as far as to try to uh, turn to Dark Ritual out the Passageway Seer and keep a hand banking on that. So if you do hold interaction for that, which 
isn't super likely. But if someone does call you doing that, or just even counters your dark ritual, like, the deck's in trouble at that point. Um, so it is all in on that sometimes. And yeah. Wait, day days exist, so. Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. Um... I think I want to put it... Oh, man, I don't know where to put this deck. Uh... I think it's supposed to go right next to Crackling Drake, if you were going to ask me. Now, whether we like it or not, that's where I think it's going. Yeah. I, I can't see it sitting next to an Armix and Dargo. Yeah, unfortunately, I think it does go down there for me. So, uh, but yeah. not on my to-do list, because I think the deck has legs and the life linking is amazing like everything you see and read is great but in practice i do believe it um has demonstrated a bit differently so yeah but uh next up we got scholar of the ages um this is a mono blue commander that i think is very interesting um i kind of know your thoughts on this deck to an extent already because i know you've played it a decent amount and I've played yep. against this deck a lot um, because you and Bobby have played it and Corrigan. <laughs> um, so yep. I've played against this deck a lot. I think the deck is strong. Um, it's very consistent, obviously. Um, the commander getting two cards back from the yard is good for value if you have to. But more often than not, you really don't want to do that unless you already have a flicker. Um, for the most part, this is just uh, a flicker deck that can really take advantage of high tide because you're mono blue. Oh, yeah. And also gets some extra lines with dramatic reversal and potentially even banishing neck stuff if you want to go that deep. Um, I'm not sure if standard variants play the mono blue knack lines, but this deck does struggle against aggro matchups. Uh, mono blue is not great at surviving against pressure that exists on the board and gets under your counter spells. So decks like Gut can really cause an issue for this deck. Um, even like maybe potentially Aristocrats builds of Black White Abdel can cause trouble for this deck. Um, but yeah, I think the deck's pretty solid. It's very consistent, can go fast can really control the game against some combo decks. I mean, I think it's a solid B. And um, the deck is good. I think the deck is great. It's, to me, one of the strongest blue decks, mono blue decks in the entire format. Um, I also, and the reason I say it's B, is I also feel the same about this deck as with Blow Subordinate. If you can't beat this deck, your deck cannot survive in the format. I mean, I could present wins to you all the time with this deck by turn 5 and turn 6. It has the capability to win on turn 3. So the deck is... I've never done it, but it could. <laughs> uh, deck is solid. Uh, what do you think about putting in the B tier? Yeah, I think B tier is about <laughs> where it sits. Um, I think you can survive. I think all of the decks here have a chance to beat it but yeah i really think decks like loyal subordinate and scholar of the ages that are very consistent but have some blatant weaknesses or very exploitable matchups things of that nature but are just very strong and very consistent at what they do are kind of the b tier they're like gatekeepers to like some of the top decks of the format so yep i agree i agree so all righty well Let's yeah, move let's on move on to uh, what I would consider to be another gatekeeper. Um, <laughs> Dargo Kedis, uh, the mono red menace. I think a lot of mono color decks in this format specifically are these kind of gatekeeper decks, um, especially these three. I think these are like the holy trinity of <laughs> mono color gatekeepers. Um, Dargo Kedis is just extremely aggressive. The entire win condition is in your command zone. We are going to try to cast Dargo on turn two, maybe turn one even, turn three if we get a slow hand. 
and then just run out the Kedis and try to punch the table two to four times, depending on our hand, and uh, see if we can get there. Um, the deck can work through, like, one or two pieces of interaction before it becomes kind of a non-factor, um, depending on what those pieces of interaction are. But, uh, yeah, um, I think it it really lays it all out on the table, and if people respect it, it struggles. And the deck does get respected a lot in my experience playing it, because people do not like taking 7 to 14 damage a turn, actually. So, uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think you said it all. Uh, this is goes right next to Loyal and Scholar. Like, this, that's where it belongs. Um, don't draw your removal. You lost the game. That's the way I look at this deck. And that's the way I look at the other two. So, yeah. Yep, pretty I much. I can see it. Uh, you want to take us away with the next one? Oh, yeah. So this one... I don't find to be the same as these other bees. Um, this is Dargo and Keleth. Um, this deck is just as fast as Dargo Kedis, but it is slower in the fact that it's only de dealing with one player at a time. Um, this deck specifically plays all of the double strike spells, all of the just all in deal with you protection and things like that so the, unlike dargo kedis this deck pr can protect the queen very similar to like gut strategies and well keleth turns dargo into a two hit and yeah um i think this deck is solid um in the hands of the right player this deck is terrifying um this deck struggles against tpi though um, notably because TPI has all these different colors, which is weird to say, and that's one reason why I do think TPI does belong in the A tier, because you get artifacts, which is a very difficult thing for Dargo and Keleth to punch through. So, w what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, um, once again, I do think the colorless creatures from TPI are very strong against these Boros aggro decks in general because a lot of times they do want to use protection from a color as evasion, not just protection. Um, but yeah, I think the deck is very good. Um, it's pretty good at being able to kill a player on turn four or five, threatening to be able to just take someone out. It does struggle sometimes, especially... So I think where this deck has issues is whenever you're playing against, like, a turbo combo deck. Because you kind of have to make the decision of, okay, do I try to kill them before they combo, even though I know, like, they'll probably just combo? Or do I try to leave them for last and just pray they don't get there and risk taking out other players who could hold up interaction to deal with that combo? Um, so I think it does struggle a bit in those matchups specifically. But yeah, I could see A tier for this deck. Yeah, I agree. Um, I also see that. Um, the the only caveat I have on that is that this deck can race that deck as well. This this deck has been built to play a turn 2 Dargo consistently. And with the right hand, you're double striking someone on turn three, which is similar to comboing on turn three, right? If you're if you need to race that player, you could race back, but that does leave you up for being vulnerable to the other two, similar to what you said. So, yeah, I definitely agree with you. And uh, yeah, a tier, yeah, sold. I put these three decks next to each other on the tier list because I thought it was funny. Um, not next to each other <laughs> on the tier list, but, you know, in the list. Uh, third yep. Dargo deck in a row. Um, we've got Dargo Malcolm. Um, and to be honest, I kind of just want to talk about all the Red Malcolm decks at once, if that's okay with you. Yeah, let's send it. I think that's what we should do. So... All right, we got Dargo Malcolm, <laughs> Malcolm Breaches, and Kedis Malcolm. Uh, Togo Malcolm's not on here because no one plays it, but, you know. I'm thinking uh, about brewing it, so 
Well, Malcolm <laughs> Rog, I think, is a and, yeah. notable include. Malcolm Rog um, is not on the list, but some people play it. Um, it hasn't seen much tournament play, though. So, but it has been putting up some pretty good results. It is, it is right there, toe to toe yeah. with uh, Malcolm Kettis. So. Yeah, it's done well in the online meta at least. Yes. But um, yeah, uh, I think all is it Malcolm decks are strong. Um, is it Malcolm is just very powerful. It Malcolm is just a strong card. And pairing it with red gives it access to all of the pingers pretty much in our format. And the pingers all do crazy work, whether they be the artifact pingers that actually win the game if you turn them into pirates, just on the spot with Malcolm, or some of the other pingers that are cast spell triggers that if you turn them into pirates turn into just good rituals and crazy card advantage if you have breaches in play or if you put a curiosity effect on them. Um, Malcolm Kettis and Malcolm Rograk are both very good at going fast. Malcolm Breaches has a great long game. Dargo Malcolm has an alternate win condition and some extra combo lines, but I don't think it's as good as the other Malcolm red decks, personally. Um, thoughts? Um, yeah. I mean, I could see what you're saying. Uh, I do think Malcolm Dargo is the one that belongs in A tier. I do believe the other two belong in S tier. I agree. Uh, um, it's I won the other night um, in my gathering of people uh, the other day. I won on turn three with uh, <laughs> Malcolm Kettis. I mean, it was insane. The deck is just blistering fast sometimes and can protect itself. I had two protection spells on turn three which was insane so the deck is so consistent so strong and the same with malcolm breaches right you have both sides of the spectrum um i do love the dargo um but i do think that deck kind of splits itself in two different ways unlike the others so and similar to malcolm rog i do think the the blistering speed does assist it in getting more wins so yeah, I just think Malcolm Dargo is uh, less consistent on the combo game plan because you're playing that alternate win condition as well. And I do think it takes... Uh, it It's more difficult to pilot. I think difficulty for breaches or for Malcolm decks go like Dargo, breaches, and Kedis and Rog are just like turbo combo. You know, you just kind of go for it and pray they don't have it. <laughs> um, <Yep. laughs> that's just my personal yeah. opinion though but yeah um, let's go on to another is it combo deck oof good old is it gill mage um, yeah I think this deck is sauce man um, I don't want to put it in S I'm going to throw that right out there from the beginning I think it's a solid A I think is it is the best color in the format. Like, right? Like, to me, is it red, blue are the strongest pair together? Um, right behind that is Boros. Um, and I'm a active Boros player. We, I mean, you know that. But is it Guildmage struggles because it's so susceptible to everything. So unlike the Malcolm decks where you get your Fiery Cannonade and it doesn't kill your Malcolm, is insane right this deck doesn't have that backup plan so you kind of could tell when this deck is starting to cobble its pieces together because they get a little bit more aggressive and get away from that control game plan they're like oh i'm gonna put this into play now and you're like oh, oh. <laughs> so it tells you what it's doing right off the get-go but what do you what are your thoughts yeah, um, it is a little bit telegraphed, but it's one of those combo decks that, like, it's been in the meta for a long time, but it will absolutely demolish you if you don't know what this deck does. Um, oh, yeah. The combo lines on this card are crazy if you don't know them, so look them up. Um, it is a strong deck. Uh, I agree with A tier. 
It does struggle yep. a bit, once again, with some of the aggro matchups, um, potentially, just because it takes so long for it to get online, and you do have to play that control game plan, you know? If you don't draw the control piece you need, uh, you don't draw it, and that can suck. But, yep. uh, yeah, the deck is pretty consistent. It just needs a lot of mana, basically, which means it takes time. But yeah, um, it's very uninteractable by most of the other control decks in the format. Once it assembles enough mana, um, it'll just put another copy on the stack, you know? So I do think the deck is pretty good, but yeah, not quite as deep. Agreed. Well, that brings us to, I think, a little bit of a controversial one here. <laughs> uh, this is Tatiova, Benthic Druid. Yeah, we can just put it in D tier. Um. Um, <laughs> you're not too far off from my thoughts, man. Um, I'm not putting this in D tier. Um, I'm not putting it in D tier either. But uh, where do you where do you want to put it? How about that? Let's see how far off we are from one another. Um, I think I want to put it in B tier. Uh. That's what I'm saying, too. I find this to be another one of those gatekeepy decks. Like, beat this deck. It's probably, like, better than all the monocolor decks, but... Hey! Um... Uh, I would definitely argue against that. Um, but, yeah. The deck is still good. Um, it's almost as if people don't want to bring it to events, though. Like, it did really well in the original Richest Drags. Um... It did top, um, but since then it's been just gone. Yeah, right. No it's, one wants to play it in tournaments around. Uh, yeah, I mean it. It's seen very even little play just in general. Like very few people have piloted. It's got like one game here, one game there, and fifty games. Right. So it's kind of like confusing to me. Like. Where is it? This used to be almost like the boogeyman of our format. And it's yeah. just it's not there. I think so. that notion probably just pushes some people away because they don't want to play the boogeyman. And some people are just probably sick and tired of playing against pods of three Tatiova from back in the day. But yeah, I I really don't think the deck is crazy anymore. Um, yep. It's good. It's got some unique combo lines that are difficult to interact with and all that stuff but yeah um i don't think it's insane yep agreed all right take us off with the next one man what do, what do we got we got ghost of ramirez de pietro with our mix um we got the hard demir control deck um a deck that plays a lot of transmute to get value by searching for control pieces and then getting those tutors back to hand with Ghost. Um, the deck has a crazy value engine. However, it requires you to have both your commanders in play to be able to consistently control the board and get your value engine going. It's very mana intensive. Transmute is sorcery speed. Uh... And the win condition for this deck currently is still just cranial plating, which is fine if you slap it on a ghost, but it's not amazing, and it can still get chump blocked um, by some slightly larger creatures. I think this deck struggles to win in time. I, I don't think this deck is great, and it's seen, like, no tournament play. Yeah. I mean, I think you said it all. I would... Yeah. Let's move on. I mean, well... Are we I, putting it I guess, in D tier? Yeah. I mean, sadly, I, it was almost kind of obvious with <laughs> everything <laughs> you said. <laughs> Alright, well, let's talk about the next Demir Ghost deck. Uh, it's exactly the same thing. It's doing the exact same game plan with the transmute and everything. Yeah, I mean, it's still susceptible to the exact same spells, right? Like, Armix is dead to the Cannonade. Ar like, Ghost yeah. Hormod is also dead to the Cannonade. 
and now we have the breath weapon, and now we have the sulfurous blast. Now, like, it's never ending now. Like, it's... it's yeah, a different win condition in the fact that you get to go wide and get a lot of tour mod triggers, but the deck is still very slow, and yeah, we keep getting more board wipes, which does not favor tour mod. Um, exactly. So yeah. It makes I, me sad. I love Ghost. I love Tormod. So. Um, well, let's talk about another commander you love. Uh oh. Oh, take this one away then. Oh, you want me to take this one? All right. Well, take I'll talk one. about this one and you can talk about the next version. Um, All right. So, this version is Rakdos Gut with Agent of the Iron Throne. Uh, this is a more mid range version of Gut not the stock standard uh, aggro boros version that we see a lot of uh this version is becoming more popular it's seen play here and there people have dabbled with it um i don't think this is as strong as boros gut i'm just gonna come out the gates and say that however i think the power of gut is pretty undeniable at this point even if you don't have inspiring leader I think it's very strong, and I think Gut can get a good value engine going if you have creatures and artifacts that want to be sacrificed, which Rakdos has a decent number of. Um, turns a lot of good ETB value creatures into good bodies, things of that nature. But yeah, I just... Essentially, it loses some of the protection that Boros Gut gets, and it's slower. Um, it has a slightly better grind game, I would say, but I don't think Boros Gut has an awful grind game. Um, except for, you know, the new board wipes we got uh, definitely hurt Boros Gut's late game. Thoughts? Uh, yeah, I agree. Um, if we were going to just kind of pull these both in together, since we're talking about Gut, we could just talk about the both True. of them, because you kind of already did. Yeah. Um, Iron Throne, I think, is a solid B. Um, it's it's gut do we gut things, right? Like, that's undeniable. So the power of gut is there, and it's it's been proven at this point. So we can't deny that it's just gut. And sometimes the gut is just going to walk you through the game because it's gut, right? Like, that is fact. Um, it's still playing Rakdos, and it's good. Rakdos is a solid color, right? Like, that is facts. So, can't argue that it doesn't belong in B tier. But if we're going to compare it to its Boros variant, both of them, both variants have solid mid range game plans. A lot of people originally assumed that the Boros variant was a mid range deck, not an aggro deck, because of how well it could grind in games. But the speed factor that the Boros one gives does push it ahead. And the protection is a big deal. Um, we do have to, once again, put out there. These new cards do impact the Rakdos one actually more. And the reason I say the Rakdos one more is those 4-1 skeletons are never bigger than 4-1 skeletons. That's just what they are. The Boros one can make them six threes, and little to known, the Boros one can actually beat these cards like Drown and Sorrow. There are creatures in the format that allow Gut to start turning into three threes and four fours. As weird as that but is, but do you play them? Uh, now the answer is <laughs> yes. Uh, the answer is yes now. So. There's a new version of the deck that is going to be coming to the next event, and it is playing those creatures to keep it out of Breath Weapon range, Fiery Cannonade range, and so on and so forth. And I mean, the deck even has cards like Shield, Shields of Velus Veil, which is tutorable with Goblin Matron. So it does have the tools to overcome its obstacles. So... If you would have asked me two weeks ago, I'd have told you that Gut Leader belongs in S tier. If you tell me today, I'm going to tell you it's A until we see it start putting up its results with the new cards that were revealed. 
two weeks ago I would tell you A, and I'm still saying A. Um, I don't think yeah. it's bad enough Aggro. to go to B tier, but yeah, I I don't think it's been S tier. It it's really strong. I think this is like one of the gatekeepers to S tier, but uh, I don't think it's quite S tier. But we'll just put it at the front of A yep, tier, that's right? What I just we'll, did. we'll compromise. <laughs> we'll compromise the front of A tier. Although maybe because, it drops now, you know. Um, well, the consistency is what does it, right? It is one of the most consistent. Just like you said, the gatekeepy of the S tier, right? You got to be able to beat this deck to be an S tier deck. If you can't beat this, just no, right? Like you if, have to. If you can't race so. gut when gut is targeting you, um, yep then yeah, probably not S tier in my opinion. Yep. But I agree. Uh last deck for the day. Let's talk about Parcel Beast. Um Oof. This is a deck that a lot of people have tried to contest Gretchen with, in my experience. Um and I think the the comparison is pretty blatantly obvious. Um they're both just civic commanders that give you value from the command zone and are infinite mana outlets. Um, Parcel Beast also has a higher ceiling than Gretchen, uh, believe it or not. If you're able to get the pieces into play to make the value engine part of Parcel Beast work, then it is significantly more mana efficient than Gretchen. However, to do that, you have to get cards like Horseshoe Crab into play, which are not good cards objectively, like on their own. Just kind of bad cards that you have to play in your deck. And you have to find them, put them into play, and mutate Parcel Beast onto them. Um, Parcel Beast does get some interesting lines to play around like bounce spells and stuff and some things like that by animating lands and, and mutating him onto lands gets around non-land removal things of that nature but yeah um while the ceiling is higher uh the floor is also lower because you have to find all of these synergy pieces and gretchen just has an absurd amount of redundancy with all of its untappers so i think gretchen is better but Oh, where 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 do you want to put this at? Let, let's start there. Um, I kind of want to put it in A tier because it's just like Simic value, but I don't think it's better than Tatiova either. Um, well, so I want to say like the more I look at the other decks on this tier list, I want to put it like bottom of B. Maybe even top of C. Yeah, uh, I was going to tell you top of C. And the reason I say that is the difficulty you run across even playing the deck, right? Like, this is Mutate, right? So you need to know the deck before you play the deck. So your first 20 games playing the deck is you just losing, trying to understand your play patterns. And then once you figure it out, you're like, okay, I get it. I know what I'm doing. But you still run into the same thing where you're like, oh, well, this deck's unforgiving, and I need to remember to do this. And if you were going to tell me to play Parcel Beast and or Tatiova, I'm picking Tatiova, right? Like, there's no... It's a stronger deck, right? I, like, my streamlinedness of Tatiova is undeniable in comparison to Parcel Beast. And the mutate like that's where it's gonna get you right this mutate is just like oh i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna put all my eggs in one basket and it's we keep getting more sacrifice fodder like we just recently got demon's disciple right so like the more and more of these we get the harder it is to play this deck over the others so yeah. i would say top of c or bottom of b yeah i'm i'm gonna put it in top of c um, so. One thing you brought up is an interesting point because you brought up that the lines are super convoluted and it's very difficult to learn. Uh, that can be a strength of a deck if you truly understand your convoluted combo lines. 
and the rest of the table doesn't, uh, that means you get to go for some crazy stuff when no one expects it. Uh, but I agree with that. Um, that's not a consistent advantage that you can take advantage of like every game because sometimes people will know what your deck does and then you lose some of that surprise factor so yep well, yeah agreed agreed but i think that's it for this one um i think it's time to bring it on home Alrighty. uh yeah uh guys this is the first half of what we are doing so please stay tuned and watch out for the next one puzzle please bring us home my bro yeah thanks for watching part one of our tier list video we'll be posting a part two here soon for you guys make sure to leave a like down below and comment if you disagree with us on any of these we would love to uh, get some discussion going in the community and obviously once again disclaimer this is all for fun none of this matters we're not speaking the absolute truth but yeah Go ahead and subscribe while you're down there if you haven't already, and we'll see you all next time.